Hello brothers and sisters, greetings once again and uh, it's another opportunity to uh, proclaim God's word and uh, today I was looking at uh, the topic of surrender, how surrender, total surrender to our Lord can lead us to the peace and the tranquility on this earth. So when you look at surrender, surrender is total submission without any resistance whatsoever to our Creator God. And when we look at uh, this kind of surrender, the best example what we can see is at the cross when Jesus said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. That was the total surrender. But can we reach that state? But I'm sure if uh, Jesus said we can do that and he said we can do greater things. So let's look at some of the scriptures today and see how we can get there and what verses would help us get there. Total surrender, total submission to our Creator God. When you look at Romans chapter 12 verse 1, Paul talks about it, you know. We are the living sacrifices, submit ourselves, our bodies, our members of the bodies as the living sacrifice to the Lord. And when we surrender our body, like put our eyes, the windows of our, to our soul, our ears, our mouth, the words what we speak, the tongue, Everybody, your hands, your legs, Jesus doesn't have his hands and legs. We are his hands and legs, his eyes, his mouth, his ear, everything. So we reflect the Creator God because we are made, we have been made in the image and likeness of him. So when we surrender our body as a living sacrifice, to him, that contemplation and that consciousness of surrendering would really lead us much closer to God. We can have great experiences and those experiences will spill over to our people around us, to our family members, to our friends to the people in the community, at our workplaces. So when we surrender our body and use our body only for His glory, then these things can happen. Let's look at another verse, uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 13. He again emphasizes on submitting our bodies as members of our bodies as righteousness, for righteousness purpose. So we need to speak every word for the sake of righteousness. There should not be any useless word because we are made in the image and likeness of God. So whatever we see or we speak or we do, it should be for His glory and for the righteousness sake because God was perfect. And he expects us to be perfect like him. We can't be, but I'm sure when we work and we put our efforts, the Holy Spirit, the wonderful counselor, would guide us there. Let's look at another verse. James chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves to the Lord. Complete surrender again. It is submitting ourselves to the Lord. We need to really look at this aspect like sitting uh, quietly in your room and you know in silence and if we contemplate how we can surrender and submit ourselves to God. He says, be still and know that I am the Lord. So when we go to that quiet moment, the moment of silence and go deep 
inwards and feel his presence right within us we have our soul then god's spirit is also there so when we contemplate on his word the holy spirit is stirred up and then that surrendering to him just enjoying that moment of happiness and joy with him spending the time with him in quiet quietness silence just thinking about his love and how we can be with him listening to him not uttering a word but just listening in silence to the deepest emotions the deepest love which we can experience when you look at galatians chapter 2 verse 20 that is the time you would find like when we go into the silence then you can see it's no longer if you have given your life to jesus christ so it's no longer that you are living it's jesus himself is living in you and that's very important when you feel that that jesus is living in you the way you would speak to someone or talk look at someone everything changes your eyes of mercy compassion and love would just be become a reality when you contemplate sitting with him that you are crucified your life to jesus and it is no longer you that is within but jesus himself lives within you let's look at job chapter 11 verse 13 he says spread your hand to the lord we have to spread we are frail weak human beings we are only the creatures so we need to beg we need to ask seek and that's our position so when we ask him and spread our hands to him he will give you everything you ask for for his greater glory but when we ask him we need to seek his will to be done if we are asking what we want it's just out of a human wisdom we need to see that we as creatures cannot think like the creator creator he knows the trillion cells in our body the trillion codes in the dna everything he knows so he is a much much bigger god we can't comprehend we can't understand him but all we can say is go like a little child asking his father or her father give me i surrender myself to you you do according to your will whatever your purpose let me fulfill that give me that grace to fulfill that purpose before i pass away from this life so when you ask for that when we ask for that he gives us that guidance that strength that courage that grace when we surrender completely to him seeking his will for us when you look at isaiah chapter 45 verse 9 and this is the greatest uh, verse i really love it you know when it's such it's so synonymous with our creation like he says the creator god is our potter and we are the clay we so clay has got nothing clay can do nothing on its own clay can become a pot unless the potter works on it and makes it a pot and that could be used so if the clay by itself cannot do anything the clay has to completely surrender to the skills of the potter and only then the potter can shape that and bring it to a beautiful pot which could be used so if our lives have to be used we need to surrender like clay to the potter's hand the potter's hand will work 
and then make us the best version of what we could be everybody has got a purpose and that purpose would become a reality let's look at even uh, isaiah chapter 64 verse 8 it again talks about the same he is the potter we are the clay so we'll remember that the clay belongs again to god because he is the creator of all in all now proverbs 16 verse 3 says commit your works to the lord we are doing different kinds of work in our profession we are doing engineers doctors any kind of profession bankers accountants computer programmers software specialists hardware specialists etc etc but all these works we need to submit to the lord yes we are looking at a vaccine for this corona panda corona uh, pandemic covid 19 now Again, that, those works, the researchers, the scientists, everybody have to surrender the works of our, the capacities of our mind and our intelligence, everything to him, and he will make it the best. Everything is just clay in his eyes. We need to give that clay to him to make the beautiful pot and which could be put to use. Let's look at uh, the Gospel uh, of Luke chapter 8 verse 43 to 48 this is one of uh, the greatest uh, passage of uh, surrender when i look at the woman who's been bleeding profusely for 12 years so after spending all her money and her wealth for a cure she was unable to do it but then when jesus was going uh, in in that street to jerry's house she thinks to herself if i can only touch the hem of his garment i would be made well so that kind of faith that surrender if i can just give my portion whatever my capacity is to him he will heal me he will get the vaccine he will get my the, the, the design what i'm hoping to do it everything he would get it so that kind of submission total surrender should be there when you surrender completely it gets done so jesus is waiting for us to hear that call and for our own surrender and submission let's look at uh, mark 10 chapter 28 where peter says lord we have left everything to follow you and jesus said they will have plenty than what they could even imagine. So right now we know what Peter has. He has the keys for both heaven and earth. Let's look at Mark chapter 12 verse 17 where Jesus says, Yes, we are working in this world. There are so many other things we need to see it when it comes to faith. Faith is the most borderline area. People really look at it in our modern world. But then Jesus gives that statement, give it to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, but give it to God what belongs to God. Our fruits, our work of our hands, what we need to submit and surrender to the authorities where we live, the, the countries, the governments, the authorities. We need to surrender. We need to submit to the policies, whatever they ask us to do. So that is giving to Caesar. We, when you surrender to the authorities, when you are obedient to the laws, the rules, the regulations, everything, whatever the government, the authorities prescribe, we need to surrender. We need to submit. We need to follow that. So that's exactly Jesus is telling. Give it to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. But at the same time, when you come back to your home, when you look deep within yourself, there should be a transformation within our hearts where we surrender our life for the greater glory of God. Everything what we have, we need to surrender to Him. Now, to end this uh, session, I would once again go back to Luke chapter 23 verse 40, 46 when Jesus said 
it's finished father into your hands i commend my spirit so we need to be preparing during our end of time to tell our creator god father into your hands i commend my spirit we don't know when that day will be where that day will be how it's going to be we never know but all we can do is be prepared and be strong seeking god at every moment of our lives being obedient to the authorities giving it to caesar what belongs to caesar and giving it to god what belongs to god thank you my brothers and sisters it's been nice to hear all your feedbacks it's been great feedback and you know please let me know uh, your feedback and you know as i said yeah, you also share your stories and you send it to me and then we can uh, dialogue if there is something which is not in your perspective but yes to understand god it's not possible this is just we can just not even get a fraction 0.00001% of who god is but all we can do at this point is we are privileged to have the scriptures with us which is active and alive and it speaks and gives us what we need both for our spiritual growth and our physical growth so let's see how best scriptures bring us together as one whole human community to praise our creator god bye folks have a nice time bye now